Here are five skills that everyone should know in After Effects, and I'm talking about the kind of skills that separate the beginners from the pros and the ones that made me dangerous after a long career. So let's level up and get started. All right, the first important skill to know is how to make repeated motion graphics as there's so many uses for this and it's a great way to build full scenes and moments. So get your popcorn and share it with me so we can press our moms. <laughs> now, there's a few ways we can go about these types of graphics, but we'll explore the important methods. So if you create a custom design using the shape tools, which will all be inside of a shape layer, you can then throw down a repeater and usually the course of action from here is to adjust the repeater's position value to create the separation you need and then just increase the number of copies and you can use the offset to animate or help reposition the graphics. And that's just one way to repeat your motion graphics. However, this method might not be the best when you wanna work with motion graphics in a 3D space. So for example, I'll create this simple but incredibly attractive box with a white stroke, make it 3D and rotate it like so. I'll have to manually duplicate this layer and reposition each duplicate, but before I create more duplicates, I wanna animate the position to move forward like this. And to repeat the animation back and forth, I can alt click the stopwatch for that position and type loop out ping pong to loop this forever. You know, I used to just copy and paste keyframes for like the longest time until I found this expression, but you know, that's okay. Anyway, since we already have keyframes, I'll go ahead and move these with the anchor point into Z space to quickly build out my entire scene. And to show off the final result, I'll create a camera, add a keyframe for position and point of interest on that camera and use a dolly torch cursor tool to zoom into the scene. And there's just so many repeated motion graphics that you can make. So for more, I'll be listing additional tutorials below if this interests you. The next massive topic to know is 3D. And it's never been easier to create 3D objects, text, and logos right here in After Effects. Knowing this will literally make you a rock star. So first things first, you can make any shape that you want and make it a 3D object by slapping that cube icon and then either using Advanced 3D or Cinema 4D for your render engine. This allows you to increase the extrusion depth and you can build more complex objects with a little creativity. So for example, by duplicating the shape, and by turning it into a stroke only, increasing the extrusion depth by a touch more, and by repositioning the Z position to create this subtle overlap. If you have a vector version of your logo, you can right click that layer and select create shapes from vector layer. And this gives you a shape layer which you can make 3D and apply the extrusion options and position as needed. And to make this actually look pretty, create an environment light with shadows enabled and you can easily change the overall look of your project by using different HDRIs to change the lighting. And then you can even adjust the material options like the specular shininess of every 3D element to help blend this better. And to further blow your mind, you can simply create a white solid layer, make it 3D and set its X rotation to 90 degrees, lower its Y position to be under your object. And then after increasing the scale like a maniac, you get these shadows. So there's unlimited things to create. So for more ideas, you can check the videos below. And to help you further with your unlimited projects, we've just released a brand new 1100 template pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can easily choose from titles, motion graphics, incredibly detailed promo slides, and so much more. By using our Motion Duck panel, you can easily edit, retime your graphics as you need, and save hours and hours of time on every project. You can also get our free pack by checking the description below. Okay, back with our third skill. A great way to beautify your vector motion graphic work is by creating true 3D depth. If you want to learn the basics of vector animation, I'll drop a tutorial below. But whenever you have a set of graphics, you can make that scene 3D with some creative duplications. For instance, this scene is currently flat, kind of boring. But if I make my object 3D and push some of them forward in Z position space, we technically now have a 3D scene. So then you can think about the objects that you can add into your scene or just continue to duplicate what you have and then start offsetting their Z position to create even more depth. And when you're ready for the next step, create a camera layer, add a keyframe for position and point of interest, and then of course use that Dolly Torres cursor tool to zoom out of your scene. And when you're zoomed out, you can continue to expand on your project. And what's cool about this technique is that you can use the camera's depth to field options to add a very cinematic blur just by adjusting the focus distance, the aperture, and the blur level to create something very epic. And speaking of epic, our fourth skill is being able to colorize anything with a cinematic touch. For instance, I have this white circle 
and by applying some layer styles, we can make this stand out. So start with a gradient overlay and edit the gradient to be a light version of the color that you want and then a darker version of that same color. You can then animate the angle to create some subtle movement. And to follow up with the stack, you can add the inner glow layer style and select your bright color and then increase the size and adjust the choke. And lastly, you can try the bevel and emboss layer style just by adjusting the depth, the size, and the angle until this looks okay. But feel free to mess around with this and you don't have to use every layer style. However, if you're working on a 3D project, you would need to pre-compose the shape in order for the layer styles to work correctly. But once your scene is built, you can create an adjustment layer, Apply the noise effect and use something like 12%, but it will vary, and uncheck color noise. Try the glow effect with a high glow radius. Then you may want to try posterize and mess around with this level. But really, this is just one way to fully colorize a scene. It's up to you what ingredients you'll add. The last skill and probably the most common task that you'll encounter is creating custom info screens. This all comes down to the power of your design creativity. When working with text, think about hierarchy. You typically want to keep important information big while the sub points to be smaller. If you're curious, the typeface being used here is poppin', so I guess what's poppin'? <laughs> anyway, with info scenes, you may need to throw in other graphics, so think about white space and layout. But for example, if you need to create a custom video split screen, just go ahead and design your ideal shape with the pen tool or any of the shape tools. Then place in your video and set the track mat to that placeholder and boom, you have a custom screen. Now that you've made it to the end, be sure to put After Effects down on your resume and put me down as a reference. Trust me, I'll give you a good word. <laughs> Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.